All right, we have some special guests here this evening. I'm going to yield the floor to Dr. Little to make the introductions. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. As you recall, last month, we teased the idea that we were going to announce tonight a um, unique partnership with the University of South Carolina, and that has come to fruition over the last month, and we are very excited about um, this particular group of, of gentlemen who are here with us today. I'm going to introduce Chad Hardaway, who's the, de the deputy director. This is a, he's got a really long business card. The Office of Innovation, Partnerships, and Economic Engagement, and his boss here, uh, Bill Kirkland, who's the director of the Office of Innovation, Partnerships, and Economic Engagement. And so, Chad, if you would, if you would uh, make your way back to the podium, um, we're going to walk through uh, what has been really a, a great labor of love and uh, what we think is a real game changer of K-12 through and higher education partnerships. And uh, I'm going to have Chad introduce his team, who are, the, they're all here in the, in the front, couple, front couple rows. They drew the, you drew the short straw, so we're glad to have you up front. It's like church. So, uh, Chad, if you'll take it away, sir. All right. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair, Superintendent Little. Uh, I'll recognize my team real quick. Uh, you see Chase Bustle. I copied his proper name, Dixon, so he's probably going to be mad at me later. Uh, Chase does all of our, our communications and public relations. Uh, Jay Henderson, as you, uh, to his right, is our business development associate. He helps put together a lot of our partnerships. Dr. Noble Anumbe, my good buddy, uh, he's up in the front, PhD. He's one of our uh, engineering faculty who helps uh, put these demos together and work with the kids, and you'll hear more about what they do later. And then our new, newly, uh, newly robed doctor, Clint Sadie, uh, he recently just got his PhD a couple days ago, so uh -huh. we're, very, right. we're very proud of him. very proud of Clint and and Clint's one of our program managers as well and so we're excited to have I'm excited to have all the team here today because uh, we really couldn't do really couldn't do what we're about to talk about without all the all these people that are in the room with me so I will I will get going um, this picture right here this is our we're the office of economic engagement we are also called innovation and partnerships uh, the main role of our office really is to partner with um, partner with industry, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. But what we're really talking about tonight is a, an exciting dual enrollment program that we're, we're working on with Lexington One Technology Center and the University of South Carolina. Uh, and, you know, we like to call this connecting potential with opportunity. Um, our Office of Economic Engagement was formed about eight years ago. Uh, and so our, our office, as it stands today, covers uh, co corporate outreach, uh, we also manage the InnoVista Research Campus. We work on technology commercialization. So for eight years or 15 years, I've been meeting with USC faculty who have invented stuff out of their research. We file the patents. And once we file the patents, we're looking for companies to partner with to get those patents to market. Uh, but also, uh, as a result of our, ha us having very early stage technologies, a lot of those patents get licensed into startups, technology-based startups. So ha we also handle startup and incubation for the university. We manage the USC Columbia Technology Incubator, which is downtown. We also have another 20,000 square foot facility called Idea Labs, uh, which, which locates, uh, has located multiple um, biotechnology or, or, or startups that need that kind of, uh, need like a lab, laboratory environment. And we've had several of those spin out into uh, the Lexington area as well as Richland County. Uh, and then lastly, we kind of target all these for what we call government and economic development. Uh, our tagline, we connect businesses small and large with the resources of the state's flagship. Uh, and we champion development and commercialization of new technologies. And we, uh, just like tonight, we're going to be talking about partnerships to drive economic development and outcomes. Uh, and so this was our slide before COVID. Uh, what I would say has happened to us after COVID is, has been this other box called workforce development education and skilling. And so one of the things that we realized uh, where, we, where we're situated and what we've been doing at the university is we had a unique opportunity to pair, uh, to pair the, uh, the industry partners that we have in our backyard. We're an industrial state, it's what we do. Uh, we have all these partners that we've been working with to engage our students and our resources to solve their industry problems. And so, uh, that's what we were doing before COVID. What we found after COVID is that this environment we created 
to, to solve these industry problems is also a very fertile breeding ground for training not only undergrads, but potentially uh, our high school students and exposing them to real world industry problems uh, and, and getting, getting a front row seat to working with companies like Nephron, uh, working with companies like Siemens, Samsung, IBM. Uh, and so our digital, we, the, what our asset that's really the most meaningful in this meeting is what's called the Digital Transformation Lab. And in this lab we have IBM as a partner. Uh, we have an industrial internet of things lab uh, where we have robotics, uh, we have drones, uh, and Samsung is also a partner there. We have Internet of Things and Product Innovation Lab. And what Internet of Things is, is that today, because of Wi-Fi, because of broadband, we now can have devices or, or on a manufacturing floor, we can have devices all over the place, and they can be connected, and they can be communicating, and we can be getting data, and we can learn from them, and we can monitor how they do, how they do jobs like welding or painting or things like that. We also uh, have an artificial intelligence lab. So we, we hired... Um, through Bill's leadership, we went and hired one of the top AI fa uh, professors and researchers in the country and brought him to USC. So we, we're also using artificial intelligence. Uh, and then lastly, we have Yaskawa, who's a partner. Uh, and what, what Yaskawa is, is they basically make, the, if you ever go to any of these plants that have manufacturing, these huge one-armed robots that do all kinds of stuff, uh, that's what Yaskawa does. And so one of our... Uh, one of our very exciting projects is over, and this happened over COVID, is we had a robot from Yaskawa that they gave us. Uh, Bill called Lou Kennedy up, Bill Kirkland, not Bill Kennedy. Uh, Bill Kirkland called Lou Kennedy up and said, hey Lou, there's a robot here. Um, maybe you could use this over at Nephron. And so we actually had over about five or six semesters and about 30 students. We had these students working on a, on a robot that um, basically, basically replaced humans in a sterile compounding operation. And so that robot went from a small demo on a table to a, to a full-size demo. And then uh, lastly, it takes up an entire room. And then and that device is now over at Nephron getting FDA approval. And that was done with USC engineering undergraduate students. And so the way our, the way our process works, and this is what Noble and uh, Dr. Noble and, and Dr. Clint have, have built, is we have this development area the workshop development area, if you see right here on the left, that's where we put together the demonstration. So right here we have a Volvo bumper. You can see here there's a robot with an iPhone on it, and it's 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 scanning that robot. I mean, scanning that bumper for visual defects, and that helps Volvo make sure that the people don't miss they don't miss items on the bumper, and that helps you know keep keep production going. The digital transformation lab in the middle you see uh, is actually like a we built it like a trade show style where once we once we harden these demos and get them working, we put them in this lab, and this is where companies can come in and showcase, and our students can work on them. And then lastly, uh, this is what Nephron, this is really what the Nephron project did for us, is we built this future factory lab. And so what this is, is that these robots on the future factory lab right here, uh, these are Yashikawa robots. We've programmed them to do all kinds of tasks. This was part of the Nephron demo. But if you can see on the top right, and I know, I know it's an eye test for, for you guys, but on the top right, the really exciting part is that through the Siemens partnership that we have, we can do something called digital twinning. And what that means is we can take robots, like the, like the robots, the physical robots you see on the table, we can build through the Siemens software a digital twin of those robots, which means anybody anywhere can do a, can manipulate or do a, um, do basically like a, uh, a dry run or a simulation of those robots and say, hey, I want these robots to do this. Let's simulate first, and then let's, let's see how the real world effect um, tees up. This will be valuable in the partnership with Lexington One because what we are envisioning is a, um, what we're envisioning, and, and this is a vision, it's a joint vision, okay? We built this together. Um, this is what we've done with Superintendent, Superintendent Little's uh, leadership and, and his excitement. And we really wouldn't be here if it wasn't if it really wasn't for him encouraging us to dream big and and think about you know think out of the box here. And so you know I really I really put down this is this is the Lexington One vision, which says how do we create an immersive student learning experience, uh, and university where students engage in discovery, design, and development. And so um, this is something that we've been doing for a while. But I'm going to tell you like we're hot off the press. December 9th, we actually had an article that was posted by Siemens. This is on their website, 
And this is a Siemens article that came out talking about preparing students for the factory of the future with Siemens solutions. This is in, and if you see it, it's Columbia, South Carolina. Um, and so, you know, Siemens has us featured and the work we're doing on their website. And I, and I show you guys this just to say like, hey, this is not something that we dreamed up with duct tape and, and uh, you know, and, and a box full of screws. Like this is something where we have it. We have ingrained industry partners. They're excited about what we're doing. They're highlighting it and they're supporting us. Uh, and so Siemens is a huge partner. Uh, the reason why the digital twin is so important from Siemens is that the digital twin gives us the ability to create a virtual environment that can be anywhere. It could be at Lexington One Technology Center. It could be at River Bluff High School. It could be at Pillion with kids interfacing through the digital twin and we, while we have the real robot in Columbia. So that's the other benefit of, of this design and what we do. Um, and so what we're talking about with Lexington One is how, how do, we're working on creating a new course, which will, repl which will base intro to engineering cl classes. It'll, it'll fit in very nicely with what Lexington, with the track that they're doing at the Lexington Technology Center. So it's not, it's, it's not creating a new class or anything novel. We have an existing course code. This is all defined. Um, and and uh, so the goal is that we would create this, this new course. And the goal is that we would have these kids come in. We could do it remotely and do intro to engineering for Lexington One uh, Technology Center students. And then part of that experience will be working with undergrads and Dr. Clint and Dr. Noble uh, with their guidance and leadership, working with industry partners like Nephron and, and letting them be, letting those high school students be part of that solution making process. And so we think this for several reasons. Um, number one, it's meaningful because we're, we're giving Lexington One students the ability to work on actual real problems. This is not busy work. These are not this up stuff. This is, you know, this is not like, well, what if? These are real companies with real problems. And, and, the, and these Lexington One kids are gonna get a crack at, at being on a team and seeing what that looks like and learning how to do some cool stuff. The really fascinating thing is uh, with IBM, we have a partnership where they do visual inspection. We could actually train a high school student, and we know this because uh, Clint and Noble do it all the time, we could train uh, that group of high school students how to, how to build visual inspection models for IBM today, probably in about four hours, right, Noble? He's nodding his head. So the point is that these kids are gonna come out with real skills. They're gonna know how to manipulate robots. These are things that all of our, any industrial partner in our state, you go talk to them, these are coveted skill sets. These are skill sets that are relevant. These are skill sets that they're looking for. And so our goal is that we get down to the high school level, we get these kids a taste of it, we get to keep them in state, we get to deepen that partnership, and we get to keep delivering uh, wonderful students and talent to the, to the industries around us. Um, and so if you look at it, you know, we'll, it's gonna be built by the PhD guys. So, you know, we'll be working on engineering design, they'll be solution oriented uh, with specifications to the, com uh, to the industry partners, uh, what they need. Uh, also, these kids are gonna learn how to communicate efficiently with an array of audiences. You know, my goal would be that we get to take listening kids to show with us, to highlight one of the, uh, one of the uh, you know, one of the demos that turned out to be something that uh, an industry partner used. Uh, and then that's gonna also match up with what we're doing on a bigger, um, on a bigger scale at USC, where we're, we're actually growing this not only with we're also growing this inside the university. So, you know, we're going to be working on creating that portal for how do we get more USC students um, mat matched up with these industry capstones and, you know, with the goal of that leading to internships and ultimately job placement. Uh, one thing I will say is that the goal we also have with this is multidisciplinary teams. So the goal I have is that Siemens could come in with a problem and I have a student, I have a student, I have a math student, I have a student. I have a music student, um, law student, business student, and the goal is that we create this truly immersive and diverse environment where people with various skill, set, skill sets can look at problems differently and create unique solutions. Um, and, that, and we do that through there. Why, do we, why are we excited about this and what is really the catalyst that got to see that we had something special? Um, it, it's, it's people like Josh. Um, 
Josh was one of the guys that worked on uh, one of the Siemens projects. We were like, hey, this is great. Josh is going to work on a Siemens project. He'll get some cool experience. Well, guess what? When he got out, Siemens hired him. And then not only that, Siemens actually gave him back to us to come back and do it again. So Siemens, these industry partners are not only excited to get talent, they're excited to get into this. They want to get into this cycle that we're doing. And this is what this is the reason one of the reasons we're doing it is the industry partners are basically affirming what we're doing and they're investing in it. And that's what leads to the led to the article that we saw earlier. Another one was Rachel Rudd. Um, Rachel uh, came through in 2017. She was working with uh, GKN Aerospace and she was picked up by those guys. And once again, it was a perfect example of where she had an applied project. They saw her talent, they saw her, her produce on the undergrad level, and now she's working with them. And then lastly, uh, Lam Nguyen, uh, he was one of our, uh, one of our undergrads that, that worked on the Nephron project. So now what is he doing? He built the project at USC. When the project went over from USC to Nephron, he went over to go get FDA approval on it. So Lam and those guys continue to come back and say, how can we do something else again? And so this is, this is how this partnership is working for us. And, and, the, and the goal that we have with Lexington One is to get Lexington One involved in this, in this activity. And we, and we see fantastic things coming out of this. Um, you, know, we, you know, the unfortunate thing is we may have some kids that get hired straight away and just decide not to go to college. But, you know, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when it comes. But the, the goal here, you know, as you can see, once again, we were very heavy in, in innovation, entrepreneurship, you know, startups, you know, uh, delivering industry solutions, what, what's really come as a result of that. And, uh, and I would say, I would argue from us being so pragmatic is and focused is that what's really led out of this is this awesome opportunity for student experience, you know, as, as Dr. Little says, uh, an, an immersive experience for these kids and, and really helping these kids gain skills and, and, uh, and skill sets, so all the way from soft skills to technical skills, um, we're seeing these kids just go out and flourish. Um, this is just a slide that shows our affiliated centers, just to give you kind of a, an idea of the depth and breadth of our office and what we do. We, our office reports straight to the president of the university and the CFO. We, we're not an academic unit where we fly kind of above those. Um, and, and the nice thing about that is that gives us reach across the whole university. So you can see we're doing everything. We're in centers all the way from aerospace to pharmacy to healthcare, predictive, uh, predictive maintenance and all of the above. So just giving you an idea of the breadth of what we're doing. One point I also want to make too is that we, this, this whole environment we built is technology agnostic. It's really about how do we develop solutions. So one day we could be doing a biomedical, one day we could be doing aerospace, one day we could be doing manufacturing. As long as those principles are there of teamwork and de delivering solutions for industry partners, we can really go anywhere. So, you know, don't, we typically get kind of pigeonholed in, well, this is just cyber or in, in engineering or industry, but this could really go anywhere. Um, and this is just copies of our, you know, this is, uh, copies of our strategic priority just to show you that this is this is an alignment what we're doing at Lexington one is not a uh, this is not a side hustle or a or a distraction this is part of what what our strategic plan is driving us to do which is how do we increase university partnerships with entrepreneurs private industry um, how do we bring private sector uses into campus environments how do we uh, develop capstones that will lead to internships and job placement and then how do we make new applied programs to produce economic outcomes and business impacts, uh, whether that's workforce development or skills transfer. In this, this day and age, uh, post COVID, the name of the game is skills transfer, education, upskilling and reskilling. And that, that applies to the technical college student, the four year degree student, as well as to uh, your very own high school students. And so, we, we think we've got something special, and, and thanks to Dr. Little's leadership, we're going to get a chance to share that with Lexington One, and, uh, and we're excited about what the future holds. And, and you know, once again, experiential learning opportunities, uh, and you can see all the various, the various uh, areas we're in. I think the other thing, too, is that we really feel like if we do this right, this actually gives Lexington One and other school districts a voice into economic development. You know, I told Dr. Little, a lot of times we talk about school systems, it's like, well, you know, I want my real estate property, I want my real estate values to stay high, and so we should have good high schools. 
but what we, and we know that we know that high schools create jobs and we know that high schools create workers but with with what we're doing and and kind of connecting the dots and creating direct effects we think we can even highlight even more how um what a what an asset lexington one is to and how they're creating the students of the future so uh and just so you know we we our metrics are economic development metrics so you know over five years for our our little office we had about a seven million dollar budget um, over that over that five year period, we've had about a seven hundred thirteen million dollar direct impact and a seven hundred ninety one million dollars indirect uh, economic impact. A big part of that was Siemens; it was six hundred twenty eight million. But if you take that away, we're still eighty five million and one sixty three. So the one thing too is we believe we can pull Lexington one into this and show how Lexington one is is contributing on the economic scale in a real and meaningful way. Um, and then these last two slides are just slides of our partners. Uh, the majority of these are um, South Carolina companies. So we span all the way from the upstate with BMW to the lower state with uh, Boeing. Uh, we have Volvo and other and other companies uh, that are that are in the mix. Uh, recently, what we're very excited about is we've we've added partners such as Seagate, Fortinet, Rove, REI Automation. Um, that's really opened up the cyber kind of universe to us, uh, as well as a partnership with Amazon. We have a partnership with Amazon on the AWS side where we're using their, their web services and things like that to give us real-time uh, real data and help create responsive manufacturing environments. So I will stop there, and Dr. Little and Madam Chair, Chair can tell me if I need to do anything else. Well, you can tell he's a higher ed guy who's not going to be here when we finish this meeting. It, uh, but uh, it, it's a thorough presentation, but it's one I think is absolutely necessary, Chad. Thank you for sharing that. Can we give him a round of applause, please, and his, his team? Um, and, and what I'd also say is I'd like to thank Mary Gaskins. Mary, if you, would you kind of wave, our chief academic officer, Dr. Luke Clamp, uh, Bryce Myers, uh, Brandon Basket, who's not here tonight. Am I missing anybody else? That's, and, and Sherry Williams, our, our workforce development coordinator, um, have been essential in, in making this a reality. And I'm absolutely, you, you can tell how excited Chad is. It, it's easy to work with partners who are that excited about the work. And so we've jumped in with both feet. Uh, we believe this to be the beginning. This is not a finished product. This is the beginning of it. Um, I get excited about having a, a middle schooler and, and what this will be. Over the next few years, uh, my middle schooler loves math, so this will be uh, pretty exciting for her, I think, one, um, in, a, in, a, in a few years. And I just think about um, we're going to grow and evolve and, and turn this into something really absolutely brilliant, and it's already pretty cool. Um, so thank you, Chad. I'm gonna get, if we can get your team up here, we'd like to take a picture, and then, then um, we'll be just know we're going to be hard at work at this over the next few months. Uh, we've got to recruit, we've got, to, we've got to get kids interested and get kids involved because uh, we want to launch the, uh, the course next year. We don't want to delay, and we're going to try to get some kids uh, engaged this summer. Uh, so there's a lot of things that we've got to get done over the next couple of months, so it's going to be a tight timeline, but I think we're going to be able to do it. Yeah, are there any questions? For, I, I should ask, are there any questions from the board? What you said just kind of made me think about, I wrote down a few things I was just going to ask you. Um, but this is very exciting, and I can just imagine a bunch of our students being interested. Is there like a cap? Do you guys have how many students you can accommodate with this? So, I mean, we're, we're, we're big believers in kind of hitting a single approach and a double Okay. We have 10 to 15 kids, and, and then I think we're going to scale it. So, so, you know, what I think what will happen is if this is a success, uh, both USC and Lexington One will both earn the right to grow. So that may be, I told Greg, I said, just like he got me to come here and present to, uh, to the board, I might be going to, I might be taking him to my Lexington uh, County Council meeting <laughs> and telling the County Council folks um, that we need to, they need to help fund more of this program so we can get more kids in it or, or whatever. But the good news for us is even with this small team, um, and Bill would tell you, you know, with this small team, we've done amazing stuff. And the nice thing with, with two PhDs is I've got plenty of people who are going to be certified to, to kind of shepherd these kids and guide them through the process. 
And so that that just those two guys, Dr. Dr. Noble and uh, Dr. Sadie, those guys uh, are giving me probably capacity off right out the gate of probably 40 kids. But you know we're looking to start small and do it well and and not you know and make sure we do a thorough job and and learn from learn and evolve. Uh, but yeah, we could grow this and and I think that this is something we could absolutely come back and get funding for, whether that's from Lexington County or or whoever. So and the other part too is we are working with our own College of Education, uh, uh, Barnett Berry, Dr. Barnett Berry, um, and uh, and uh, Vic Young. And so we're also looking at federal grant money that we can go after to also support and build this up. All right, thank you very much. Let's get a, let's get a picture real quick down front. And I'm just going to add a personal comment. I've known Chad since way before he did this, and I'm very proud of him. He's done a good job. I haven't seen him in years, and I've seen him twice today. I saw him this morning. Big things happening in Lexington One. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us tonight. You don't want to stay? What? Okay. Check back in with us in about three hours. We might still be here, so.